Hello everybody and welcome! Today was a historic day for spaceflight because one of the next human rated spacecraft to take astronauts to the International Space Station, the Boeing Starliner, had its orbital flight test. Unfortunately, not everything went according to plan, how NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein explained during a press conference. When the spacecraft separated from the launch vehicle, um, we did not get the orbital insertion burn that we were hoping for. It uh, appears as though the mission elapsed timing system um, had an error in it. Um, and that anomaly resulted in the vehicle believing that the time was different than it actually was. Yeah, so basically Starliner did not reach orbit because it did not have its clock synced correctly. The astronauts mentioned that would they have been on board, this probably could have been prevented. Well, I'm not completely sure of that, that sounds a little bit like human hubris to me, but let's leave it at that. Let's just hope they get Starliner home safely. What I do want to show you is how to build a Starliner replica in Kerbal Space Program. Be warned, most of the voiceover was recorded while the live stream was still active, so I was talking under the assumption that everything was going according to plan, but that should not detract from this fun little build, so here we go! I thought why not provide you with some nicer visuals than we got during that orbital flight test demonstration. So I decided to build a Starliner myself. So we're going to start with the capsule. Of course it's going to have a heat shield because, well, we want to survive re-entry. Docking to dock with a space station. There we go. And we also need some other parts, like for instance parachutes. I don't know by heart the amount of parachutes that are on Starliner for real, but I know which amount of parachutes are needed to get this thing down safely. Another thing that Starliner has is the nose cone that's going to be jettisoned during ascent. So we're going to do just that. So we're going to use our little tiny Sepatron boosters and put them in there. Just turn them a little bit. There we go. Nice and clean hidden away. What I'm also going to do is... Where are you? There you are. Remove this one from symmetry and reduce its thrust just a little bit. Why? Well, the reason why is so that I can, uh, that the nose cone is pulled away a little bit to the side from the vehicle. What I'm also doing is enabling the staging for this uh, docking port. And this will enable us to jettison the nose cone more easily. And I'm staging the drogue shoots first. Okay, what else can we need? We're going to need probe. Pollution. And for this we are going to need sort of that trunk that Starliner has. Okay, for the trunk I'm going to use one of these structural tubes. And of course Starliner also has an abort system. Yes, we're going to provide it with an abort system. So I'm using a little trick to uh, put the, the, uh, this part where the, the abort system is going to be added to the side with the translation tool. Come on, get over here. There we go. Because uh, that makes it easier to put what I want to put there inside. Uh, because otherwise then the attachment node of the, uh, what's it called, the heat shield, heat shield is going to get in the way and I don't want that. So we're going to have these separatrons and we're going to have these separatrons and let's make them a little bit more tightly wound up, right? So how about this? That looks good. And these here go down and also inside. Right, so we can uh, put this... Oops, that was a mistake. But this is not. If you press spacebar when you have translation engaged, then it will remove itself back to where it came from, which is a nice feature in Kerbal Space Program. So, uh, let's add some fuel tanks. And let's add some over here as well. 
there we go. Because, of course, we need some propulsion in here. And for that, I'm going to use this small spark engine. Yep, nothing's uh, coming outside of the trunk. Well, except these, so I'd rather put them back. I mean, it looked great how I put them there, but I think we're going to have to have some clearance. There we go, that looks better. All right, a board system over here. Let's test it out. Boom! Okay, something exploded, but this is fine, and we are aborting. Cool! Okay, back to the building. So, what else is going to happen? Well, this thing also has an aero shield down here, which is more... well, it's, it's, it's a lot straighter than what I'm going to produce here, but, well, those are the limitations of Kerbal Space Program's fairings. Okay. I'm going to leave it like that. Doesn't matter. We're going to put some more force behind this. And now let's build our upper stage. Move this a little bit higher. I'm going to select one of these 1.5 or 1.8 meter uh, style tanks. And we need an engine. And we fortunately have this little bobcat thing in here, which is going to simulate our dual RL10 engines. Of course, they are not uh, modded uh, or modeled after the RL10, but that's beside the point. I'm going for looks here only. Right. So I want to have the aero shroud uh, separating before the Centaur dual upper stage. So I just uh, managed to do that. I want to have this here. And then I want some tanks for the main booster, the Atlas V, big booster. Okay, I'm not going to use a orange one, I'm going to use these white ones, because for some reason it's half orange, half white. Well, not really half, it's like semi-half. Like this, or like that. Like this, or like that. I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave it like that. What do you think? Okay, also some auto strutting. And over here as well. So we also need some engines. Okay, but before we can... Oh no, let's do that. The RD-180 uh, engine, which is basically a dual chamber uh, a closed cycle engine, I think. Uh, which is of Russian origin originally. And now we're going to also give a shroud, uh, give, uh, give the rocket another shroud down here. Nope, I don't want two, I just want one. And I want it a, bit, a little bit longer. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, and now since this is not a regular Atlas V, but a regular... <laughs> Are there any irregular Atlases? Anyhow. It's going to be an Atlas V-2, meaning it's going to have two solid rocket boosters. And we're going to put them over here and line these up with the engine down below. Looking good. And then have a nose cone up there. Yes, let's also strut this. And let's, let's put some small Sepatrons over here as well. Boom. We're going to have just some tiny fuel in there and move them inside so they don't disturb our visuals. Right. I have to select the correct solid rocket boosters, otherwise this is going to happen really quickly in a bad way. Okay, how do we look like? Uh, we're going to uh, have way too much delta V for this, so I'm going to reduce this a little bit and then we're going to have a lot of thrust to weight ratio on our after separating the boosters so i can reduce the thrust on my uh on my so-called rd180 and also since i have some experience with these engines i'm going to reduce the gimbal limit because the gimbal on these are insanely uh big so the gimbal range is quite quite large and this might interfere with stuff. All right. This looks like a nice Starliner. I think we can try to launch this. 
Oh, I totally forgot to add the solar panels. How careless of me. So, I know there are some over here. On the bottom of the spacecraft, so to say. And how do I'm going how I'm going how am I going to do this? Well, going to be a little bit of a visual mess, I believe, because yeah, well, does not look very nice if those Zs are Z fighting as much. And what I'm going to do now is remove this from symmetry, remove this from symmetry, and remove this from symmetry. And I'm just gently putting uh, putting these in a little bit of a different height than the other ones. So the Z fighting will stop. Oh, this didn't work with that. I exactly put it back where it was. But now, yep, that looks better. And I'm going to do the same here. We also want solar panels over here. Yeah, that's 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 acceptable, I think. We're using it to get a little bit further down. All right. Okay, time to reattach all of that. Boom, there we go. And you're going to be over here. And you're going to be moving a little bit on the inside. So we are... <laughs> we now need to build that fairing again. There we go, we have a Starliner. Let's test the abort system again. All right, pad abort, test. And... We're off. Yep, that works. Fine. Back to launch. All right, now it's time for our Starliner to launch. Three, two, one, lift off. And here we go. Our two solid rocket boosters and our makeshift RD-180 engine, which is basically two vector engines, which are way too powerful in general, but yeah. What can you do? Or lifting the Atlas V with the Starliner on board towards the skies. I'm going to do a small roll maneuver over here and then already pitch this into a better, well, inclination, so to speak. And yes, we're going to fire our engines as long as it takes. And I've reactivated the user interface so you can actually see something. Okay. The uh, solid rocket boosters have burned out, but like the real mission, we're going to hang on to them for a little while until we separate them now. There we go. That's a nice and clean separation. I like that. Hey, 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 stay there. Where are you going, Starliner? I'm actually doing this. I'm actually recording this while trying to watch the... Uh, official live stream, but it is so boring to watch because the only thing you see are control rooms with uh, people in ties in front of monitors. Well, some have ties, some don't, but you you, you know what I mean, right? Okay, we're going to shred, uh, shed, <laughs> not shred, I hope we don't shred anything. I'm hoping to shed the arrow skirts now. Boom, skirt gone, and so is... Whoopsie! <laughs> that was a bit uh, different than I intended, but it worked. It worked, and we're now on our way to orbit. And yeah, I don't want to reach orbit too quickly, so I'm going to burn down a little bit more. I'm watching my a altitude, my apoapsis height, uh, up in the left-hand corner, provided by Kerbal Engineer Redux. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to aim for something around 75 kilometers. And I'm going to hope that I can raise my periaps before I... Well, that I can raise my periaps enough before I can exceed that 75 kilometers too much. Well, I'm already on 76. And yeah, let's, let's stop that over here. All right. Starliner is now going to separate from the dual center upper stage. Now, there we go. 
going to use my engines to get a little bit more away from there. And we have some nice clean separation. And after that clean separation, we're going to head towards our apoapsis. Putting the vehicle in an orientation that the solar panels can actually work. Look at those nice reflections. I could try to dock with a space station, but I don't think that I have one in orbit at the moment. I have some other things up there that I want to uh, work with in the future. But let's let's get this into orbit first, right? Let, let's do a real orbital flight test. So let's provide ourselves with a circularization burn, which is uh, rather minimal, to be honest. The interesting thing about Starliner is, uh, in well, compared to uh, the Crew Dragon of SpaceX, is that it can land on land. So what is going to happen in the real world is that uh, after firing the parachutes and gliding down to safety, there we go, we have reached a successful orbit. After gliding down to safety, What's going to happen is that uh, some airbags are going to pop up and going to make Starliner land safely. And what I'm going to try here is land the vehicle safely without these airbags because Kerbal Space Program does not offer us this luxury of bags, at least not in the stock version. Maybe there's a mod for that. If you know one, tell me in the comments. I'd just like to know. And let's have our burn, see where we're going to end up, yeah this could work, and let's warp over there. Now we're not going to dock with the International Space Station because I don't have anything in equivalent to that here in my game. What I am going to do is separate the trunk. There we go. So basically the engine section is dying in the fiery hellscape of the atmosphere. So if you can watch closely to the left side, it is tumbling away over there. And maybe we can see it light up as soon as you get deeper into the atmosphere. Uh, anyhow, our heat shield is doing much of the work over here. This heat shield is probably over-engineered because, yeah, I did not reduce any of the ablator, which I could have done, since this heat shield is probably uh, enough to get us home from potentially even an interplanetary encounter. Okay, you see on the the back the Starliner debris flashing up, but it's already moved away way further than us, so yeah, it's out of reach. So let's see where we're dropping down, shall we? Well, this could be that we're landing in the ocean, which I did not want, to be honest. But yeah, let's, let's see what happens. And we're dropping like a stone. Oh no, we're going to land on land. Great! I love it when a plan connects. Okay, first the drogue shoots. There we go. Thanks for droguing. Now the main shoots. Yeah, in reality I should probably jettison the drogue shoots now, but yeah, I'm going to leave them because I didn't put any action group in there that would drop the drogue shoots. And now it's just the time of waiting for this to land. So, I know there's a lot of SpaceX fans out there that say, Oh, Boeing, boo, because they charge 50% more than SpaceX and they are uh, politically entrenched with some senators and whatever. True, but what I do like is if more than just one entity is capable of getting people into space. And I'm a little bit sad that it's only for the US and Russia and uh, China and potentially India. Are they launching people? I don't know, but I would love for a European company or a space agency to get people into space on our European own asses. But yeah, that's still very far away into the future. 
Be that as it may, this was my Starliner video. I hope you enjoyed this and if you did, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel or give this video a like or share it with your friends. Also, follow me on my social thingies, the links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.